Sweet Namaskar with my respects to all. It's my uh, pleasure, honor, and privilege to be invited to this uh, wonderful celebration. As Dattaji said, it's not just a conference, it's a festival. And India is Utsava Priya. Bharat, that is my country, we are very fond of celebrations because all life should ideally be a celebration. And um, particularly today's uh, theme on which I will try to speak. One can only try because Divinity and feminine, sacred, all such words have a tremendous outreach, a span, a canvas, which cannot be filled by a few words, by images, but words which may serve as sanket, as guidelines, or as uh, uh, goalposts leading to something much larger. Now, I will start from, I was thinking what to say because there's so much to say and as you were told, I'm a dancer. My Arangetram, which is the first debut recital in classical style of Bharatanatyam, was in 1961 and I was not a baby then, so you can imagine. So, I think I have an advantage, I have the advantage of uh, realizing or experiencing these great tenets, these great concepts in three dimension. Through my body, through my mind, and through my heart. Usually words create one dimension, at the most two. In India, therefore, dance has been called chakshusha yajna, or that which paints before you in three and sometimes four dimensions the great concepts. Today, I begin with the very beginning. May I read out when the creation was not created yet. Time had not started to spin its web. The unmanifest Shakti, darker than Kajal, the cold, and maybe we can imagine the dark hole in space, which it is said sucks in light galaxies, solar systems, Milky Ways, and nobody knows how and where, in which space and universe they are spewed out. So this is the darker than Kajal Shakti, non-manifest as yet. Our story begins then of the divine feminine principle. This narrative is from the Veda Vyasa. Rishi, the seer Veda Vyasa, after whom the Sankul is named, and I have the honor of staying overnight in the Vyasa suite. So I think it's very appropriate. He, in deepest meditation, saw and experienced where she, the unmanifest Shakti, gave darshan of the soles of her feet on which was seen a thousand petaled lotus on which were inscribed the verses which later were compiled by the seer Veda Vyas 
as Sri Devi Mahabhagavata Purana. Tato Bhagavati Devi Gyatva Tasyabhi Vanchitam Svapada Tala Samlagnam Pankajam Samadarshayat Munistasya Sahasreshu Daleshu Paramaksharam Mahabhagavatam Nama Puranam Samalokayat and what did these, these, these verses tell him? That she, the unmanifest, who had just shown the soles of her feet, not yet the full form. Trailokya janani, nitya, satchidananda rupini, yasyaha padam mujadvangvam dadat hadaya pankaje. She, who is the soles of feet, are held on the chest of Shiva, who lies prone as Shava. And that is the Shakti part of this Devi on Shiva. Vishweshaha Shava Rupena Brahmadinam Chudurlabham. And her darshan in a manifested form is Durlab, is not available even to the greatest of gods. What a Majestic, fantastic concept of Shakti. And this unmanifest Shakti then took form because that was the need of the hour, let's say, and created with the desire to create. There was the spandana, the first vibration in creation. And that first vibration was her desire to create. And what does she create? This is from Sri Devi Mahabhagavata Puran, not my story. It says, her desire to create, she created a male figure. Now pay attention what, what it says. A male figure without consciousness. Chetana Rahita Purusha. And very often, jokingly, I've said, I see many of them today around me. <laughs> she imbued them with the three guna, the three attributes, the gunas, qualities of sattva, rajas, tamas, from which arose Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh. And then the story goes on. The Bhagavad Purana is very, very graphic. I would like to now bring you to the continuum of this story. How Devi, from where the word Devi comes. There is Sri Devi ji sitting here. And Vaita ji, aapko namaskar karti hoon. The, the, the root in Sanskrit is Dev, which simply means light. It's very simple. But from this simple root ar arise Devi, Devata, Divya, Divakara, Divasa, and so many things. Day is Divas, Divakara is the sun, which gives light. Devi and Devata both are used for the feminine. Divya is, Divyata is what? Amazing, this uh, something divine. And divine and day, they all come from the same root. So this is the beginning. And uh, I will then take you to the concept of Devi what she has meant to us who are brought up in the tradition of Bharatiya Samskara from this, from this very sacred, special earth, what has come to us. I think the concept of Devi, therefore, is of one incandescent, effulgent being which holds the creation within herself. And now, I was very lucky to uh, travel to almost 90 countries of the world. In many countries, 
three, four times, like Venezuela, Colombia, Brazil, Turkey, so many. And uh, I have seen the figurines, jo hamare hadi songk vagere se mili hain, Kali Bangan, Piri Bangan, the ancient, the diggings, archaeological digs. Everywhere in Turkey, the museums, archaeological museums in Turkey and Venezuela and Colombia and wherever, Peru, the archetypal feminine divinity is with a pot belly, parapet, like a pot belly. Why? And huge breasts, because she holds any number of universes creation within herself. And therefore, when the mother is pregnant, it is this very belly of the ancient goddess. She looks like that. Every mother looks like that. And that is why we in India say, Matru Devo Bhava. May the mother be like goddess. She is the goddess. And <coughs> also, the idea, the concept of void, shunyata, it is, it is a very tricky word. I'm joining, combining all these concepts because that one huge pot belly of the ancient goddesses and of the present day mothers as well is the void, the shunyata, which brims with possibilities of creation in every form, with every nuance. Just see why we have these traditions coming to us. And when we hear of the rape, molestation, murder, torture of women, it is beyond imagination, beyond tolerance. How could anyone disrespect woman who is the very at the very root of all creation whether in nature in trees in birds among animals even insects amoeba and humans so therefore today's theme is so appropriate the divinity is not there the divinity is here and that is why we have a beautiful saying Shariram Adya Khalu Dharma Sadhanam. These pot bellied figurines are in front of us in every form. And then the Hridaya Mandira in the, in the heart, in the sanctum sanctorum of the heart. Unki pran pratishtha karte hain. We anoint them. And therefore, Mother has been supreme in every ancient culture and civilization. Now, remote as all this may sound, big concepts, big ideas, how close they are to us in everyday life, as, that, as you already mentioned, I'd like to go a little deeper with that, that the, uh, uh, our Indian mind from deepest consciousness perceived that with capital T as Brahman, the ultimate reality of which everything is just the mirror. I wish I could have shown you some images, but that reality, that Brahman, which has no akar and nirakar and nirguna, no attributes, but our mother has all the attributes. And we, as we see the world, perceive the world, is just the mirror image. And therefore, if you visit Indian temples, or if you see paintings, if you see photographs, if you go to the museums, you will see that Devi Parvati, Surasundaris, Apsaras, nymphs, dancers, on temple walls, in paintings, in Patachitras, they are also shown as holding the mirror. They are not looking at themselves as we do. This is the symbol of the Srishti, the creation, which is in, in her hand. It is she and the mirror image that is the Srishti, the creation.
So I, I do exhort you to pay attention to all these beautiful images. There are many books in which you can see them. And when you see a woman holding a mirror, doing her lipstick, don't think that she's looking only at herself. Perhaps she's looking at much deeper consciousness. But when I see today's boys doing this, I don't think, I think they are Chetana Rahit Purusha. Okay. I will take you to Mohan Jodaro. Mohan Jodaro uh, in now in Pakistan, more than 10,000 years old. One of those mysterious civilizations where the scripts are not yet deciphered. Can you imagine the hieroglyphics of the Egyptian and the Sumerian civilizations have been deciphered. The tablets have been read. The pyramids have been known to, to belong to so and so. Ramses one, Ramses two, whatever. Mohanjo Daru's script has not been deciphered. But there are some seals with figures. And there is a bronze statue of a woman. And she has been called in various ways, but one, that she is the dancer. I've seen that image. I've seen that bronze. And why I take you, I kyon iska zikr kar rahi hun, ke her one hand is on the hip, ek haath mein bohat sare, lot of bangles on one arm, and she has thick lips, slim athletic body. She may be the goddess who danced because energy, shakti is never static. It is in constant motion. And therefore the divine feminine has been called Nandi Vidya Nadeshwari, Lasya Priya, all so many epithets describing her as a dancer. If Shiva is Nataraj, she is the Nateshwari, the very goddess, the epitome of the creation, the dance of creation. And I think this, these are the things that are not very vocally spelled out. When I look at anything, I, I, I see the, the depth of that idea. And this what has given me, my dance has given me that vision, that perception to see this. So, the Rig Veda, the first of the Vedas, we know Chatur Veda. Rig Veda describes Usha, Usha, Ushas, the dawn, in terms of dance. She comes driving her chariot in pink flowing Uttariya. It flows. And you see Usha, the, the dawn, it's pink, as if announcing the advent of sun. So Usha ko bhi humne devi banaya hai. Usha is also goddess. She comes before the sun. And she's pink, and she's flowing, and she comes like a dancer. What a beautiful imagery. Then, I would like to tell you that Rig Veda is a, a collection, anthology of mantras. It's not written by one. These have come down orally, the oral tradition. And 27 among these Seers are women. I refuse to recognize them for you recite. Just one verse, how powerful it is. The Rishi Vaj, or Vapat Vaj. And she is a Brahma She has realized. She is Aham Brahmasmi Tatvamasi, which came later. She has realized the ultimate reality, and therefore she is Devi, because she says, Aham Rashtri Sangamani Vasunam Chikitushi Prathama Yadkiyanam Tamma Deva Vyadadhu Purutra Bhuri Sthatram Bhurya Veshayantim Aham Rudraya Dhanurata Nomi 
ब्रह्मद्विशेषरवेहंतवाऊ I am the power that stretches between earth and sky. I am the one who gives all the prosperities. I am the one who is worshipped first among all the devas at the time of yajna. Who can say that? Only those who have realized who are one they are not separate. and this is batch so i consider also such women as devis who have divrata they are the embodiment of divinity the feminine principle as the force behind creation or the force that creates was recognized in most ancient cultures i went to dublin ireland and in the museum i saw their ancient goddess the celtic goddess sheila na gig the sumerian goddess isis ishtar they are all goddesses durga and i think i'm told and i saw the image of the sumerian goddess with the lion and i heard from scholars that our own ashtabhuja durga astride the lion riding the lion has deep connections with sumeria as well so the goddesses the shakti is everywhere and um, fecundity fertility and nourishing power is constant everywhere i was uh, thinking of the belly dance in egypt now it might have become a kind of a entertainment but what is the belly dance belly is the seat of creation navi and it is the dance the circulatory movements are the movements of the earth and that is the dance which creates which gives fecundity phaldrup hota hai phaldrup hoti hai zameen dharti our own gujarati garba you, you saw the garba the circular dance but garba is the apabhramsha of garbha the womb from which creation comes and therefore the proper garba and the navaratri the nine days uh, days of devi are celebrated with a perforated pot a earthen pot mitti ka ghada perforated with the light inside the chetana this chetana is in the garbha and that is the garbha the garba which is established ritually and then and it's not just the women the men also dance in gujarat and saurashtra and you see most of our folk dances are circular so so many things have come together in dance and music and paintings and weaving the, all the philosophical anthropological archaeological concepts are made real even today especially in our country in india we should be proud of it uh he has already mentioned but i would like to take you a little forward the most ancient river in india is saraswati she is celebrated as a goddess of course but the rigveda does not mention ganga the ganges the rigveda mentions saraswati the perennial river of knowledge the perennial river of knowledge which never dries up which may have gone underground as today 
बट द फ्लो इज कंटिन्यूस हमें ये सोचना पड़ेगा वाई सरस्वती हैज गॉन अंडरग्राउंड इट इज वेरी सिम्बॉलिक इन द डेज ऑफ सोशल मीडिया एंड मोबाइल फोन एंड कंप्यूटर वेर इज नॉलेज देर इज ओनली इंफॉर्मेशन देर इज नो नॉलेज तो आई वुड लाइक टू शेयर विथ यू इन अ लाइट अ मोमेंट द संस्कृत श्लोक दैट वी ऑल लर्न मोस्ट ऑफ आस लर्न एज चिल्ड्रेन वेन यू गेट अप इन द मॉर्निंग यू फर्स्ट टू नमस्कार whoever is there not there you get up to namaskar rub your hands and look at your own palm and then karagre vasate lakshmi at the tips of my finger is goddess lakshmi karamule saraswati saraswati at the base of my palm karamadhye tu govindam govinda go when the go is knowledge tejas light incandescence effulgence here in the center prabhate kara darshanam and therefore get up in the morning and look at your own palm and recite the shlok and imagine the divinities right there now today karagre vasati mobilem karamule whatsappam karamadhye tu tell me what what about you are doing instagram uh, computeram whatever prabhate karadarshan first thing pick up your mobile so that is where we have come to and therefore got is saraswati the river saraswati has gone underground i'd like to believe that she will emerge again thank god ya kundendu tushar haradhavala we all heard that shlok is very beautiful the thing to understand which are the which are the adjectives used for saraswati tushar har dhavala she is dhaval dhaval you see in english you have one word white or you have fair we have several synonyms in sanskrit so she who is like the garland as if wearing the garland of dew drops <coughs> tushar kunda the white flower indu the translucent moon can you imagine the color of that garland as if she is wearing that ya shubhra vastra vrata shubhra is clean washed brilliant she is wearing those clothes ya veena varadanda mandita kara her hands are beautiful holding the veena the ancient instrument but which signify the music of the spheres ahata and anahata that which you can you can hear with the human ears and those which which you can hear only in the deepest meditation ya veena varadanda mandakara mandita kara ya shweta padmasana seated on a white lotus white is the color of pavitrata shuchita and of tejas she seated on a white lotus and then ya brahma achyuta shankar prabhati bhir devi sada vandita she is of course worshiped by all the devas who need that knowledge they need pragya they need buddhi they need kala but the last pankti i love that that last half line and i teach that and i try to imbibe that what is the prayer of whoever wrote this verse the prayer is not for more knowledge more information more buddhi it is simply nishesh jadya apaha <laughs> remove jadya completely completely what is this word jadya is very beautiful very complex and i think we need to all of us work towards removing jadya from ourselves from our families from our societies jadya means sloth s l o t h alasya moodhata murkhata stupidity carelessness crassness a lack of social etiquette a lack a lack of understanding a lack of perception 
a lack of intelligence, a lack of the power of discretion. Kya uchit hai, kya anuchit hai, what is appropriate, what is not appropriate. No buddhi, kshira, nira, viveka nahi hai. You cannot discriminate between good and bad. All that is within the umbrella of that one word, jadya. Remove that from me, O oh Goddess, O oh Mother Saraswati. What a fantastic prayer. Don't you believe? Don't you agree? Hello? Yes. Yeah, I think we... And the, the next Goddess that he has talked about, Lakshmi. But Lakshmi is later. First, she arose seated on a pink lotus. Now white is gone, now the pink, the colors are being filled in. Pink lotus, Shri. Shri appears from the milky ocean. And what does Shri mean? Simply means luster. Noor, Nami. Without that Nami, without that luster, nothing grows. Wo bhinash, that moss, that uh, uh, what shall I say? What is the word I've, I, I don't get? Uh, my English is not very good anyway. I studied in a Gujarati medium school, thank God. So, last year, that which makes everything fecund and fert fertile, that is Sri. Uh, we often say, you know, we look at people, we say, Sri Heen, Sri Viheen. There is no luster on the face. Noor nahi hai. Its face is like that, like a bulb that is gone, and the lustrous face is like that. So she is that. She transforms into Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth, of prosperity. The Ashta Lakshmi is there, and of course then she becomes the wife of Vishnu. Shri is Shri, but as Lakshmi, she is the wife of Vishnu. Now, we also say that gods are lusterless, Gods are Shri Vihin, Shakti Vihin, if they don't have the consort. As in life, also for the gods. Those who are not married, you may be happy, but let me tell you that when, when the Purusha and Prakriti, the Shiva must have Shakti to galvanize. Without Shakti, Shiva is Shava, corpse. That is what our our sales say. I don't say that. I think it's they are right. So, from the mega to mini. Now, we have talked about abstractions, and I would like to bring you down to earth again, because this is the parallel traffic, the parallel thinking that has been going on in India, and that is why we are so close to our gods and goddesses, very close to them. They don't live there, they live here, they live in my house, they live around me, they are everywhere. So, what I'm saying is, from abstract concepts of metaphysics and spiritualism, we had to fashion our goddesses in our own image. Why? To make them ours to try to understand ourselves through them. Ye bahut hi ek sundar lendin hai. It's a give and take. A beautiful give and take, therefore. And uh, let's see how it happens. I was afraid I won't be able to dance. I met with a terrible accident in 1974 in Germany. Autobahn car accident. I broke my spine, I broke my ribs, I broke my collarbone. And the German uh, doctors, the surgeons said, I will never again dance. I may walk normally, if I'm lucky, after two years. And then a Canadian chiropractor in Montreal, he had seen me dance earlier. He took up the challenge and put me back on my dancing feet within a year. But what I'm saying now, when this was pronounced, I will never be able to dance again, perhaps walk. I was surrounded in a fortress of fear. I was ready to die, I was trembling, but what went on in my mind was, 
दुर्ग में दुस्तरे कार्य भय दुर्गा विनाशिनी प्रणमा सदा भक्तिया दुर्गा दुर्गति नाशिनी एज गुरु गोविंद सिंह सेड दुर्गा 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 पाठ बनाइया दुर्गा दुर्गा गुरु गोविंद सिंह जस से दुर्गा भगवती दुर्गा भगवती दुर्गा मैंने क्या किया वॉट है वैटन माँ फॉर गिव मी फैट एन एनी थिंग रॉन्ग माँ आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू लिव इफ आई कैन नॉट डांस हे दुर्गा हे भगवती ओ मदर प्लेस मी एंड शी डिड एंड शी डिड सो दुर्गा नाम कहाँ से आया आई वेर दुर्गा या दुर्गा इज वन हु डिमोलिशिज destroys your durga of fear your self inflicted bhaya what a fantastic idea that's what mother does the the, the child comes running crying looking back Ma, come come darling come darling and when mother embraces the child there is no more fear of anything in the world and this is what devi is if you see in her the mother This is what our earth is. Prithvi Devi, Vasudha, Vasundhara, Mahi, Urvi. We we are we are stamping on her, and we mine. You know, chhati chirte hain uski every day. We are so disrespectful of this mother. In our dance in India, we take off our shoes. We first do bhumi pranam. we first bow to the mother offer our salutations our homage with the prayer for forgiveness because now i am going to jump and stamp on you ma please forgive me that is how we begin so goddess shakti in so many forms and from mega to mini i would now like to quickly bring you to parvati we did saraswati we did lakshmi there is parvati we did durga and parvati is she was beloved we say they she she sits with him ever forever as on the left side of shiva uh for those indians who are familiar with this image of ardha narishwar are you familiar yeah. shiva right half devi left half uh dataji i have now started loudly proclaiming this as the form of shakti not only of shiva now this is a very subtle difference i want you to understand that when we talk of the divinity the divine feminine we must also understand as i said earlier nuances created by terminologies terminologies are very important so he who has given his left half to her and it is counted among shiva's many forms and i say if they are equal half i shall count her count that image that concept as among the forms of devi who has given her right half half to shiva so then it will become ardha nara ishwari not ardha narishwara ardha nara ishwari yeah and i've been labeled feminist <laughs> kya karega we can't do without labels these days anyway so i was told are you a marxist no are you economist no are you scientist no educationist no i'm an artist Parvati is the ideal home maker. She is the mother of Ganesh, Kartikeya. Shiva can't live without her, and therefore, at the time of Hindu marriages, the ideal of Parvati Shiva's love is given as example, and the blessings are always given. May you. we always be the beloved of your husband i would like to add the pandits to start saying now may you be the loved one of your wife yes is one enlightened man there <laughs> there is 
one more name I would like to take of Kali. There are many, many, millions of names. Millions of names given to our great goddess, mother goddess, Mahamaya, Parashakti, Adya, whatnot. Kali or Mahakali. She's fantastic. She's all dark with the lolling red tongue, dark, open, curly hair, eyes as like fireballs. She looks fierce, but she's very compassionate, as mothers are. Mothers have to discipline the children. Remember, it's not always lard pyar. It is also behave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is why, that is why Mahakali, as she galvanizes everything, transforms all forms. She who sets the wheel of time in motion and then as Mahakali devours it. The Srishti creation, Sthiti, upholding, remaining, maintaining the creation and the Laya, Vilaya, submergence again. It all happens within Kali or Mahakali, Devi is Mahakali. What a fantastic notion of not only time, but of timelessness. So as I said, the abstraction becomes, for us Indians, very easily approachable because we have transformed them all into our images, into images, into symbols that we love. And uh, uh, I quickly, yeah, oh my god. She may appear enormous as a mountain or tiny like a petal of a flower, she can be easily pleased as she is the mother, but she can be wrathful at the breach of divine protocol or breach of etiquette. And I use these words meaningfully. Etiquette, samskar, achha vihavar. You were told that Prime Minister Modi has uh, taken me as an artist among his nine gems for the Swachhata mission, for the Clean India mission. And I have said, uh, through my art, I have to install this. Through my speeches, I have to install this idea. Clean thought. Swachha vichar, swachha vani, swachha vihavar. The three Vs. Vani, vichar, vani, vihavar. And that is where we come to the protocol, the etiquettes. The etiquettes are more or less forgotten today. I have seen, and I mentioned this, that Devi, as mother, tolerates everything up to a point. You know, the child can piss and do everything chichi and, and, and pull her hair and pull her sari and whatever. Mother doesn't mind. But when the child goes out of hand, mother gets one tight slap. And the child has to understand. And this is what we need today, a tight slap on the world, on societies, on our very stupid behavior towards each other. And I pray to Amma, to the great goddess, to be within us, be with us, and really teach us a good lesson. But this symbolism is carried in our Hindu epics and uh, mythology, not my Puran, Asura, the demonic forces, whether it's King, Kim Jong-un, or whoever, the terrorists, these are all the asuras. Mahishasura, Bhasmasura, Tarakasura. All the asuras have been named. We can see them today also. And I say, each one of us, each one of us, man or woman doesn't matter. Shakti resides in all of us, has to become that Devi, that Durga. All of us have to become Durga to destroy the demonic forces. Yeah. yeah, okay, running out of time. I knew that because when I start talking on, on her, I just go berserk. Okay, now at the end, I will just uh, pray uh, that she, uh, uh, she gives us a lot of, uh, uh, lot of uh, shakti and power to overcome our uh, all our inhibitions, all our fears, and I would like to say at the end, Jai Bhagavati, 
जय महादेवी जय महामाया जय महाशक्ति जय प्रलय कारिणी जय सृष्टि धात्री जय जगदम्बा जय जगन्माता आई बाउ टू यू एंड आई पे माई हॉमेज टू ऑल ऑफ यू